Hi, I'm Bill Myers and this is another one of my video tips of the week. In this week's video tip, I'm going to show you how to edit dash cam footage using Sony Vegas Movie Studio. Now this works in any version of Sony Vegas Movie Studio, but for this video I'm going to use Movie Studio Platinum 12, which I think is currently the best version of Movie Studio. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is start Sony Movie Studio, and I've already done that. Then you want to go to Project, and then choose New, and under New, set your project properties. In this case, we want this video to be HDV. 1280 by 720. Now we're going to give it a project name and I'm going to call this dash cam one and we're going to put manage project files here which means it's going to save all the project files in this folder that I've set here and then I click OK. Now I'm going to import the video for this project so I'm going to click project import media and then I'm going to go to my dash cam and my dash cam is a removable card that I pulled from the dash cam a little micro SD card and when I click on the file that shows up as DCIM, I click that. It shows me folders, and each folder represents a days full of video. So I know that I want the video from the day before yesterday. And I've already viewed this video, so I want this file right here. So I'm going to select that file and click Open. And it imports the video and puts it in my project media down here. Now to get that video onto the video track, all I do is drag it up there. And there's the video there. I've already played this and I know there's some background noise of my wife and I talking and some car noise. And I want to remove that. I don't really want that to be part of the video. So I'm going to right click on the audio track where it says group and I'm going to choose remove from. And once I do that, I can now select the audio track and press delete and the audio track is gone. Now when the video starts right here, this is a convenience store that I'm pulling out onto a street. I'm turning left, going down this street right here. And I want to start the video right there. So what I really want to do is delete all this part right through here. So I hold down my shift key and my arrow key to select that much of the video. And I can press delete. Now before I press delete, if I go up here and turn on auto ripple, it means when I delete things, it'll move the video track over to fill in the deleted space. I've turned on the auto ripple. And now I'm just going to press the delete key to delete the highlighted video. You notice everything moved over like I wanted it to. Now I do want to fade this video in, so I'm going to move my mouse right up to the left corner and just slide it like this, I'm dragging it, and it does a fade in. If I want to play that, I just click the play bar, and you can see down here it fades in. Now this is my preview window down here. It shows me what I'm going to see on the screen. I can make the preview window larger just by dragging it up like this, and I can see more. Now that I've faded in, I probably want to put a title here. And to do that, I'm going to put the title right here in the top track. I'm going to right click. I'm going to select Insert Generated Media. Now, I do have the option to insert text media, but I like using Generated Media instead. I click that. I'm going to choose Legacy Text. With Legacy Text, I can put in the text I want. I'm going to change the font down to um, 48. And 48 looks pretty good. I can change the placement just by moving this up like that. I can put it anywhere on the screen. Right there looks pretty good. We're going to do some effects. One of the things that we want to do is to draw a shadow around the text. You can see what that makes a difference. Let me turn the shadow off. It's hard to read. Turn the shadow on. It's a lot easier to read. One of the other things I can do is turn on the outline and then choose an outline color. I'm going to choose black for the outline color. And now you can see it's a lot easier to read. So if we like that, we just close that down. Now if I wanted to put some text below that, I could. I could just create me another text window here. Okay. We, we like that. It looks good. Uh, the text is on the screen. We want the text to fade in. So we do that so it fades in. Then we're going to have this other text fade in just a little bit after that. Like that. We want all the text to fade off the screen at the same time. And if we play it now, you'll see that it fades in the way we want. Both of them are on the screen at the same time. And there we go. Now one of the things that you notice here is on my dash cam footage it has a lot of my dash here and it also has the time and date stamp from my dash cam. I really don't want that so I'm going to get rid of that. The way I do that is put my mouse on the video track, right click, and I'm going to choose pan and crop and in my pan and crop window but make sure that I have this icon click right here. This is the lock aspect ratio icon and when I have that I can move my window around and the, the aspect ratio stays the same and we're going to go with that. So now if I play it, you'll see that it doesn't show the time and date. It only shows a little bit of my dash. Everything looks pretty good. Now there are a couple of boring parts here in the video where this truck in front of me stops and it just stays there for a few minutes. Really, that's kind of boring. So what I want to do is I want to go back here to where that truck first stops. 
I want to hold down my shift key and arrow key and just select a lot of the video that I really don't want to show. I want to start right there. Where these people walk across the street, I don't really want to see them. And I'm selecting the parts that I want to cut. And I don't want to start again until that truck has moved up enough so that we can see something else. So I'm just selecting a lot of the video to cut. I think I'll cut all that. And again, I've highlighted the part that I want to cut. I know that Auto Ripple is on, so when I press Delete to cut, it brings all the video back together. So my cut took place right there. Now when I play that part right there, you're going to see a slight jump where it cut. You see that jump? If you don't want the jump, what you can do is you can just drag the two pieces over the top of each other and it'll do a fade instead of a jump. We'll do that. You see a nice little fade there. So that's how you do it with the video. What you'll want to do at the end of the video is you probably want to fade it out and the way that you fade it is you drag the corner. Now there's one other thing you want to do in the video and that's when I add some music. And the way that I found the music for this particular video is I went to YouTube, I went to their audio library, I looked under genre, I found jazz and blues. I went through and listened until I found a blues a song that I liked. Once I liked that blues song, I downloaded it. And now that it's downloaded it, I can import it into my video project. And the way I do that is I click Project, Import Media, and this is in my download library. And it's called Bar Crawl. I click that to open it. It shows up in my project media. I'll move my video track so I've got an audio track here. Before I drag it, I want to go all the way to the beginning of the video. Drag the audio right there, and there it is. Now, at the end of my video, let's go down here at the end of the video. You can see that the video is a little bit longer than the audio. That's okay. I want to shorten the video so it matches the audio, and now we've got it. If I play it now... You can see how the video works. We're not completely done now. What we want to do is we want to do project and then save as. And we've already chosen a project name. Now, because I'm pulling this video off of the SD card that goes back in the dash cam, I'm going to put a check here that says copy media with project. What that does, it'll copy all the media that I've used in this project and save it in the same folder with the project so that whenever I come back to edit this project, all the files that I used in it will be on my computer. So I click save. It asks me to copy source media. I want to do that, so I click OK and it's saving all the files. Now before I can upload this to YouTube or Vimeo, I'll have to render it. To do that I click Project Render As and I want to put a check mark where it says Match Project Settings. I'm going to uh, render this into MP4 so I'm going to choose Internet HD 720p and then click Render. Now be sure to uncheck Render Loop Region Only otherwise it'll only render the part of the video that you have selected. So we click Render, and the process starts. Once it's completed rendering, you have a file that you can upload directly to YouTube or Vimeo, or if you want to compress the file for the web, you can use the free Handbrake program to make the file size smaller. Anyway, I thought you might be interested in knowing how to do this. I'm Bill Myers. This has been another one of my video tips of the week. You can find more like this at www.bmyers.com.